All right, we're going to get right into the video. It's titled Lying Ministers. And this is to those who seek the truth. And um your ministers they aren't always honest. They may not be as uh, honest as you think they are. I'm going to take a look at one such example where they they're lying straight from the pulpit. First, we're going to cover contents and objectives. Contents. We're going to go through a, a brief prayer to open up the study. We're going to go through a, uh, an introduction. I'm going to give a warning to the liars and the deceived. We're going to discuss the lie that is uh, being spread in Advent Adventist circles. We're going to review some of the liars and the deceived. I mean, we're going to see some video clips of those who are spreading this lie or this rumor uh, we're going to briefly cover the prophecy of Ezekiel 9 we're going to review the truth and I'm going to give a final warning now uh, the objectives you know I like to cover the objectives in my studies because a lot of ministers they'll give the they'll give you the title of the study you know but they don't really make make it clear their objectives or what they want you to get out of the study so I like to uh, share you know what I want the viewer to receive from my video so, uh, the objectives of this video is to clear up the rumors and the lies that are being spread in the Adventist circles and to uh, investigate you know I want I want you to become an investigator and to look deeper into what your ministers are telling you and uh, I just want to encourage you to start holding your ministers accountable when they tell you, you know, a falsehood or an error in their sermons, don't be afraid to confront them when they're not being truthful. But first, let us open up with a prayer. And you can pause the video if you want and uh, get on your knees and pray. But I'll, I'll also be praying in your hearing. Uh, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for watching over us. And I uh, thank you for bringing my brothers and sisters together to hear a word from you and as we examine the Bible references and the Spirit of Prophecy references. And I hope that they uh, will look deeper into what I'm sharing with them and help me to convey the information in an effective manner to clear up the lies and rumors that are taking place in your house, Lord. I pray that you forgive us from all of our sins. Continue to lead us and guide us in the way that you have us to go, Lord. And take not your Holy Spirit away from us. Help us not take the sacrifice of your Son for granted. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, it's always important that we open up with prayers. An introduction. This is an introduction to lies. You know, if, if you remember and you're familiar with the... Uh, the Bible and the, the whole story of the fall of Lucifer and the rebellion in heaven, you know, it was lies that got us into this mess. You know, Satan was lying in heaven and deceiving angels in heaven. And, um, you know, he took his lies and carried them to earth and through his lying deceived Eve, both Adam and Eve together. And uh, it's these falsehoods that got us in the position that we're in today. You know, and uh, Satan, he did, he lied and deceived many. And Satan is still lying today. But uh, he, he uses individuals. And it doesn't matter whether these people are pastors or co-workers. Many individuals are lying today. And these lies cause untold trouble. You know, millions of people, billions of people being affected by lying. You know, God, he hates lies. And as we know, God, he cannot lie. That's uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 2. So uh, since we want to be more God-like, we want to be righteous, we shouldn't lie either. And we should make sure everything that we say is the truth, 100%. You know, whether we have to go and do some research to make sure what we're speaking of is true, we need to go and do that. You know, we need to make sure that we're not breaking the ninth commandment. You know, it would be a shame if many Seventh-day Adventists 
you know, well, we keep the Sabbath. Oh, we, we're the only ones that keep the fourth commandment. Okay, yeah, you're keeping the fourth commandment, but it'll be a shame if you end up in hell for breaking the ninth, bearing false witness against your neighbor and lying. So uh, just, you know, just take this as a, a small warning that we should not lie. You know, we all know this to be true. We should not be lying. We should always be truthful. So a warning to the liars. We can read uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 and 8. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death okay so here we clearly have it written in the book of revelation all liars are going to have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone and also the fearful those who are afraid of being deceived and those who are fearful of investigation <laughs> those individuals are going to have their part in the lake of fire as well you know this is a serious warning that god has given to his people in this time we should always be truthful. But sadly, many of your ministers, they're not being truthful from the pulpit. And uh, we're going to get into the lie that they're, that they're spreading in a minute. But, you know, we need to take heed to these warnings. A warning to the deceived. It is true that people like to be deceived, flattering themselves that they are on their way to heaven, while Satan winks at their ignorance. The word of God says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. People, this is a warning. We are to speak of things that we only understand. Okay? But many... Many are speaking evil of things that they understand not. They're just rattling off what they hear. They hear a rumor and they spread it like wildfire. People, if you are doing this, you are going to pay one day for just recklessly speaking of things that you don't understand. It says that shall utterly perish in their own corruption. You know, it's saying, you know, he winks at your ignorance. He sits back and laughs. You know, and this is this is a pro this is a big problem in the church. It needs to be addressed. And my advice is not to be deceived. Do your research. Make sure you have your facts in order before you open your mouth and speak. Just to safeguard yourself because from speaking a lie. So this is the topic that we're gonna cover today. We're gonna cover the lie. Many Seventh-day Adventist ministers believe and tell their congregations that Davidian Seventh-day Adventist members or Shepherd Rod believers are going to kill non-Rod believing Seventh-day Adventist members to fulfill Ezekiel 9. Can this claim be supported by the Rod message? Okay, so this is what we're going to examine today in this video. And I just want you to take note of this illustration. Tell a lie once and all your truths become questionable. Once you tell a lie, once you, you get caught in a lie, you lose your integrity and you can no longer be trusted. And it's very hard to gain a person's trust once they tell you a lie. Very hard to do so. Let's take a look at some of the false accusa accusations. We're going to first look at uh, this brother named David Mould. He is a, uh, like a layman's, uh, pastor and he has a he has his own ministry i believe it's called lrl ministries and this is taken from a dvd series that he put out called more than waco chapter one the early years you could look this uh just look up this title on youtube and you'll pull it right up now the whole series is not on youtube but just there's a couple parts from the series that are on youtube that you could watch but uh watch what he says and notice how he gives no facts all right, and, uh, 
Take a look at what he says. Lincoln, thank you so much for granting us this interview. Our ministry, right. Layman for Religious Liberty. My pleasure. You didn't have to, but I'm exceedingly grateful well, for I was it. Bound by my friendship, I had to do it. Is that really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the number of issues that have been on my heart for years, some have grown more intense, particularly the recent appointment to the Supreme Court, but I'm not going to go there just yet. Um, there are about six issues that I'd like to cover today. The book, The New Illustrated Great Controversy, you would have been the first person to have even heard of it in the administration, one of, one of the first, okay? Sure. And we'll tell the audience why. I'd like to talk about the ad that we ran in Time Magazine back in 1990. There are some religious liberty issues that I'd love your take on. There's a new ad that we've designed for USA Today. I'd like to talk broadly about finances and in particular about uh, Liberty Magazine and how it's funded and an issue that came up recently, the danger that I think is posed to the church by that lunatic teaching of the shepherd rod mm. that they have been appointed to kill Seventh-day Adventist pastors. So this pretty know. much summarizes it. Now, people, I'm going to show you what the Shepherd Rod message teaches from their own books, all right? What Brother David Mole just did was a flat-out breaking of the Ninth Commandment, bearing false witness against his neighbor. The Shepherd Rod message does not teach that they are going to be the ones to kill any Seventh-day Adventists in accordance to Ezekiel chapter 9, all right? I'm going to make the facts very plain. Right, that was a satanic lie what this brother is putting out. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, more individuals that do it, but first I'd like to read you the, uh, the email that I sent him. So this is the uh, email that I sent him. You can see his email address, lrlministries at yahoo.com. And after viewing that video, I wrote this to him. Adventism is in the same fix. The majority of the congregation are clueless when it comes to the old truths. Many of the youth don't even know what the three angels' messages are. Does this mean that Adventism is flawed? Of course not. If one wants to deviate from the truths of the Advent message, they are the ones with the issue, not the Advent message itself. There may be some misguided rod believers holding the belief that they will be the ones to kill other Adventists. But I ask you to show me where it says that in the original message. Do you realize that not only are you lying on a group of people, but you are also making Adventism look bad because you aren't speaking the truth. You are breaking the ninth commandment. Again, I challenge you, provide one text where the Rod message states that they, Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, will be the ones to perform the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. That's all I'm asking for. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 22 states, Lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. Also in Proverbs, the Lord hates a lying tongue. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, you read where the liar is going to end up. And we all know that that's in the lake of fire. Then I read this quote from uh, Patriarchs and Prophets page 309 paragraph 3. False speaking in any manner, every attempt or purpose to deceive our neighbors is here included. An intention to deceive is what constitutes falsehood. By a glance of the eye, a motion of the hand, an expression of the countenance, a falsehood may be told as effectively as by words. All intentional overstatement, every hint or insinuation calculated to convey an erroneous or exaggerated impression, even the statement of facts in such a manner as to mislead, is falsehood. This precept forbids every effort to injure our neighbor's reputation by misrepresentation or evil surmising, by slander or talebearing. Even the intentional suppression of truth by which injury may result to others is a violation of the ninth commandment. Again, for the sake of truth, provide a text or remove the video. And that's how I close my email. He replied, Go right ahead. What you are failing to acknowledge is that the rod... 
movement has disintegrated into smaller and smaller atoms, one believing this, the other believing that. Your particular brand may not believe as the, the so-called Gileadites do. That does not make our warnings about the dangers and fanaticism of the rod inaccurate. I am ready for your challenge, to court if necessary. And that's how he closed his email. Now, it, as far as these Gileadites go, I don't know who the Gileadites are. All right, the Gilead, the word Gileadites is not even mentioned in the Shepherd Rod message. So whoever these people are, I don't know who they are. They're not, but they're not Shepherd Rod message um, believers. And to prove it, I'm going to show you uh, in the Shepherd Rod message database that the word Gileadites doesn't even appear there. Let me pull it up for you real quick. This is the Shepherd Rod writings. It's the entire database. Alright, so I typed in Gileadites, and as you see, zero hits. There's not one reference. There's not one reference present. So, whoever the Gileadites are, I don't know. But they're not Shepherd Rod believers. Alright, so I showed you the video, I showed you the emails. Let's take one more look at another video of his. But we also discussed the Shepherd Rod. Now, why? And I'll be honest with you, the Shepherd Rod organization is the reason, above all, why I had gone to see Ted Wilson that day. And I'll tell you how that came. And I just want to pause it right here. As you can see in the back, you see the Time magazine with the uh, Waco incident, and that's David Koresh. What this brother is trying to do, he's trying to blend the Shepherd Rod believers with the Branch Davidians. All right? The two are completely different. They're completely different. So when somebody says, oh, the Shepherd Rod are, are, are Branch Davidians, that's false. David Koresh did his own thing. He was something else. It's, he, he wasn't going by what the Shepherd Rod message taught. All right, so right here, he's, just, he's trying to prejudice your mind by using these images and trying to link the two. About. At a religious liberty dinner, Several months earlier, Lincoln Steed and I were talking and Lincoln had mentioned to me that he was getting not necessarily a flood of email from the Davidians or the Shepherd Rod members, but he was hearing from one or two of them. And something sparked in my mind. I became alarmed because of an utterly fanatical teaching held by some members of that group. Years before that, maybe 20 years before or more, 25, I was preaching in New York at a church and I think it was in Manhattan. And after the sermon, a gentleman came up to me and introduced himself to me as a Gileadite. I'd never heard that name before. And the, the Gileadites, it turns out, are part of the wing or one of the wings of the Shepherd Rod organization. This brother is lying. He's lying. He's, he's flat out lying. The Gileadites are not, they, they're not connected to the Shepherd I've never even heard of a Gileadite. He, he's lying. The word Gileadite doesn't even appear in the Rod message. And he told me that he enjoyed my sermon, but that it didn't go far enough. And I questioned him, what did he mean? The man says he was an angel, and he would be killing Seventh-day Adventist pastors before the return of the Lord. Yes, that's what he said. He would be killing. What it was was a twisted interpretation of Ezekiel 9. My eyes must have been bulging out of my head. I couldn't believe that I was hearing what I was hearing from a sane person. But the Davidians have this teaching about Ezekiel 9. And some of them may take it further than others. Maybe they, maybe they aren't all Gileadites. I don't know. But it was enough to me to hear that kind of fanaticism. And with the general conference session coming up in Atlanta, where all the leaders of the church would be gathered under one roof, I became alarmed at what Lincoln Steed shared with me. Worse yet, about a week or two prior to that at our own church, 
we discovered one of the Davidians or a shepherd rod lady on our choir. And you need to know that the teaching is not the seventh the teaching of the Seventh day Adventist Church. Not at all. And when asked about this slaughter, she said she would participate in it. That it would be a, an, an, an unwelcome thing or a gruesome thing, but she would do it if God called upon her to do it. So I'm saying, myself, what in the world? What in Look, I don't even believe him. I really don't. He's telling us this, but I, it's, it's hard for me to, to believe such things because, you know, I've, I've been in Seventh-day Adventist Church. I've visited many churches, and I know Shepherd Rod believers. I've never met one who holds to this idea. The message doesn't even teach this. You know, I don't know who these people are that he met, but I don't, I don't believe him. I think he's just lying. What is this? And so there they are contacting Lincoln. And I said, Lincoln, you know, you really should go to your, your superiors, your bosses, and tell them about this, about this uptick in traffic coming from the Davidians. And he said he would, but he didn't. And after a couple months of Lincoln's silence, and I'm watching the date coming for the general conference session in Atlanta, I decided, you know something, I'm going to call Ted Wilson myself. And I called him, and I told him I wanted to see him. He was surprised. Of course, he remembered me. He said, come. And he made, I, I got the appointment with him and went to Silver Spring. It turns out that Ted Wilson knew nothing about that diabolical doctrine, that twisted interpretation of Ezekiel 9, where they think they're going to be the ones carrying out this slaughter of Seventh-day Adventist pastors. But Ted Wilson did tell me this. He said, I'd come to the right place. That he was in charge of security, not only at the building in Silver Spring, but that he'd be in charge of security at the Georgia Dome. Now I know that in saying what I'm saying to you now, I have not endeared myself to the shepherd rod. As a matter of fact, I heard from Australia several months ago where somebody, one of our donors down there, told me she's having a hard time with the shepherd rod because they are saying a lot of evil things about me. Friend, I've read stuff about myself where I don't even recognize myself. So it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me that Satan would stoop to slander. Paying the price with slander is a small price. If I can alert Seventh-day Adventists to the absolute danger this fanatical organization is to the Seventh-day Adventist church. All right? This is still God's church. I may be a dissident, but I'm a seventh People, I just want to say this. If you were to read the Shepherd Rod message, you would be shocked. You would be shocked at what the message actually says and how powerful it is. <laughs> This man is a liar. He's never read it. He's prejudiced against the man. He's never read. He's ignorant. The Adventists. There is no eighth church. The Bible stops with seven. Laodicea. Okay. We also discussed briefly this gift of a hundred million. It's funny how right after that he just starts talking about the money. You know, you can watch the video, but that this money is the only thing that's on these people's minds. All right. And um, you know, it's it's truly sad. The word Gileadites are not is not in the Shepherd Rod but uh, message. Okay. The, the whoever the Gileadites are, they're not Shepherd Rod believers. The word Gileadites is not even mentioned in the Shepherd Rod text. And this brother, he's confused. He's trying to blend. He's trying to take something that's not the Shepherd Rod message and make it the Shepherd Rod message, just to dirty the name of the Shepherd Rod message. You know, it's truly sad. And, you know, if he really had something of substance, uh, the, the Shepherd Rod message really said what he's claiming. It said, why can't he quote it? Find the quotes in the message. Okay? Find the quote, find the page, find the book, find the page, find the paragraph, and quote it. And what he's doing is all here saying it's all gossip. Here's another brother. This brother is deceived and a liar. Uh, this is David House. This is from Saving Health Ministries. And the audio file I'm about to uh, play was taken uh, the 17th of January, 2017. He was at my house. He came over to my house once to do a Bible study. And, um, you know, listen to the audio clip. You'll see that the man is clearly prejudiced. He did not study to show himself approved according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. You know, he did not prove all things. As we're supposed to do, according to First Thess Thessalonians chapter five verse twenty-one, and um, he's he's deceived, just like the fallen angels. They believed a lie, and you know God, he's God is not going to stop individuals from believing lies. 
And even though I cleared it up for him in the in the following clip, no matter what I say, he's still gonna find an issue with the message. You know, so take take a listen to what he says. Now, is that the only point that's deterred you from studying? All right. So the major point. Uh, that's not the major point. Okay. The major point that has is Ezekiel nine. All right. Where uh, the book. Uh, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that the rod message states that it's going to be a literal fulfillment that individuals of the rod are going to come through and slay. All right. See, and. Brother David, that's wrong. Okay. Okay. Why don't you let me read to you what the rod says on that point? Okay. All right. I'll be right back. I do have the. That's a line that the ministry told you. All right. You didn't read that from the rod message. Okay. You did not read that from the Rod message because the Rod message doesn't teach that. What the Rod message does teach, however, when um the founder of the Rod message was alive, Victor he, Hotel, yeah, okay. he would allow people to, and people still do this. They they write in their questions, all right, and he answers them. Basically, this book here is it's pretty much it's a compilation of all of the. It was like their message magazine, mm -hmm. okay, so. He would publish the magazine, and in the magazine, it would have question and answer sessions. All right. So this individual wrote in, all right, and this is this is the whole thing. Individual wrote in, question: Are the 144,000 after being sealed to go and kill all the others in the SDA church who failed to receive the seal? Answer: The slaying of the tares in the church is plainly foretold that it is work that this work is not man's duty to perform. The prophet Ezekiel in vision was shown that the angels who bear the slaughter weapons are the ones whom the Lord commissioned to slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women, but to come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Ezekiel 9 6. The Lord makes this destruction of the tares still plainer by his parabolic illustration, saying, Let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the, to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So shall it be in the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. It's clearly labeled here that it's going to be the work of... I said it's clearly labeled here that it's going to be the work of angels. That's the stance that the Shabbat message has always taken. It's going to be literal angels. Read the ninth chapter of Ezekiel. It says, Six men came by way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north. That's heaven. You, you know, that's the stance that... And he, he believed that lie because his ministers told him. He didn't investigate it for himself. He just heard a lie and believed it. Listen to this clip, you know, this is proof that he wants to hold on to the lie. And the Bible is clear that the that these beings are sent from heaven, the higher gate, which lie toward the north. That's heaven. They're heavenly angels. They're not men. Once the call goes out, once the 144,000 are sealed and they go out and do their work and begin to do their work, the Lord is going to wrap it up in righteousness. It's going to take place very fast. Yeah, it will be a fast work. And we'll see if things so I don't I don't really I, I'm having a hard time seeing where we're disagreeing yeah that's, that's what what are we disagreeing on all right what do you not believe in Ezekiel 9 of course I believe in Ezekiel 9 you believe in a literal slaughter that's going to take place no I don't believe in a literal slaughter sister white says it it's going to be literal in the well, sense that the angels will do it yes yeah that's yeah. what I mean yeah that's what Ezekiel 9 is it's the angels now, who, what's your definition of the angels? S literal angels. Like, not you and I. Not, no. Okay. No, from Look, no matter how many times I said literal angels, this brother still wanted to ask me again, not you and I.
with literal angels, not you, and because he wants to hold on to the lie that he heard. You, you know, against the shepherd rod message, he just wants to hold on to it. And he still, he still wants to believe that it's going to be the work of men. And I believe he still believes it. That the shepherd rod message uh, teaches that it's going to be the work of men, which it doesn't. But, um, you know, this is truly sad. Heaven, those and, um, beings that live in heaven. Listen to this. No matter how, I, I can't make it any more clear. The shepherd rod message teaches that it's going to be the work of literal angels those beings that that live in heaven right now it's not the work of any human being and uh this is the last clip i'm gonna play of him but um again he's never read the shepherd rod message so he doesn't know what he's talking about he really doesn't so not only was he deceived you're gonna see in this clip that he's also a liar Notice what the Bible says in Isaiah 11, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1. Only those who are rooted in Christ will have the boldness to go forward to do the work that must be done at this age. The Bible says in Isaiah 11 and verse 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of who? Out of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of his... Are we talking about the same thing here? Same thing as Revelation 5 talked about. A root of David, the root of Jesse. Jesse was David's father. So we're talking about the same thing here. Notice what it says in verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. The rod is talking about correction, brothers and sisters. The rod is dealing with rebuke, reproof. That's the rod. Not shepherd's rod. That's a false movement. Continuing, like, like people, and with the people, look at look at how much he hates the message, but he never read. You even just tell breath his of his language. lips, righteousness shall. He like look at his body language. You could just tell that the brother hates a message. He never read the message. I have him on audio file saying, telling me honestly. No, I I asked him, have you ever read the Shepherd Rod message? He says, no, I haven't. So how does he know it's a false message if you never read it or investigated it? But let's watch it again. He judged the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. The rod is talking about correction, brothers and sisters. The rod is dealing with rebuke, reproof. That's the rod. Not shepherd's rod. That's a false movement. Not shepherd's rod. That's a false movement. brothers and sisters the rod is dealing with rebuke Sorry reproof that. that's the rod not shepherd's rod that's a false movement continuing and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked this is talking about christ brothers and sisters jesus christ was not the spirit of the lord descending upon jesus did not the spirit of the lord descend upon jesus as he went to john the baptist in the wilderness a self-supporting minister, a minister who was not ordained of the general conference. Well, look, anyway, this brother, he never read the Rod message. How do, you, how do you know that something's false if you never investigated it? He simply went by a gossip and hearsay. I'm going to read this quote to you from Gospel Workers, page 127. Truth is eternal, and conflict with error will only make manifest his strength. We should never refuse to examine the scriptures with those who we have reason to believe desire to know what truth is what is truth suppose a brother held a view that differed from yours and he should come to you proposing that you sit down with him and make an investigation of that point in the scriptures should you rise up filled with prejudice and condemn his ideas while refusing to give him a candid hearing 
The only right way would be to sit down as Christians and investigate the position presented in the light of God's work, which will reveal truth and unmask error. To ridicule his ideas would not weaken his position in the least if it were false, or strengthen your position if it were true. If the pillars of our faith will not stand the test of investigation, it is time that we knew it. There must be no spirit of Phariseeism cherished among us. This brother, is, he's a clear Pharisee. He, he didn't read the message yet. He condemns it. And no investigation on his part. Just, oh, it's a false message. Take my word for it. You don't have to investigate it. Take my word. Some <laughs> people. It's about time that we wake up. How many examples did God have to give us? He gave us the complete example of his life and what he went through. Dealing with the scribes and Pharisees of his day. Have we, have we not learned from his example? The same spirit that existed back during the time of Christ. That were working through those evil men. Those scribes and Pharisees. Is the same spirit working even more ferociously today. And it doesn't matter if these brothers have their own self-supporting ministries. If they seem like they're, they're walking with the Lord. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. Many of these in many of these individuals are gonna be lost. How can you condemn a message which you never read or investigated? Take heed to these things, people. We're gonna look at the next liar. His name is uh, Akeem J. Brett. This is from the Akeem J. Brett YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch his sermon titled "Who Exactly Are the One Hundred and Forty Four Thousand?" And again, he's going to lie on the shepherd ride message and the believers, what the believers believe. He clearly breaks the ninth commandment, bearing false witness against his neighbor. And he gives no facts, no quotes, no evidence. So it's all gossip because that's what he's basing his claims on. Gossip. He never read it for himself in the message. Let's see. Amen. The Bible says Ezekiel chapter one, 9 and verse one he cried also in my I'm gonna pull up a better video give me a minute all right I'm gonna try to play this video it's gonna look a little bit choppy because um oh, there's something wrong with my graphics card but the video is gonna play a little choppy but you can still hear the audio the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter one, 9 and verse 1, He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near every one, every man with a destroying weapon in his hand. Verse number 2 says, And behold, six one, six men came from the, high, from the way of the highway gate, and which lie toward the south, every man a slaughter weapon in his hands. Let's stop right there for a moment. The Bible says every man. Amen? So we're seeing men. But the Bible says that these men are angels. Amen? Who are they? Angels. There are some people, especially a group called the Shepherd's Rods. Amen? Who believe that they are the men doing this work in Ezekiel chapter 9. So I want to show you from the word of God that these men cannot be you and I, humans. These men represent who? Angels. Hold your finger in Ezekiel chapter 9. Let's go in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 19. Amen? Hold your finger. Ezekiel chapter 9. We're turning to Genesis. Genesis chapter 19. We're seeing that men, these men are not you, you and I. These men represent angels. Amen? Alright, so as you saw, we saw his video clip, and again, he gave no facts, no quotes from the Shepherd Rod message, no evidence. He just broke the ninth commandment straight from the pulpit and lied. This is the next brother, um, also spreads that lie. Uh, Dwayne Lemon, he told the congregation at one church that the Shepherd Rod believers will kill SDA members. And uh, I called him up, I managed to get his number, I called him up to call him out on this point. And, you know, during our first phone call, he said that, yeah, he read it. He told me that he read it from the Shepherd Rod message. And I was like, well, where did you read it? You know, can you give me a, a book, a, a um, page, a chapter title, or can you give me a reference, please? 
and he said that he, he will that he was gonna reply via an email so I gave him my email address and you know several weeks went by no email no no reply so I called him back you know like uh, brother lemon where is the reference you know where did you read this and then uh, he claimed that he was like claims that it was possible that he may have made a mistake was like how do you make a mistake by saying that you read something I mean that's a pretty hard mistake to make you saying that you read it straight from the rod message but then you you, you seem to can't find it oh but I, ma I made a mistake the brother was clearly lying you know, and eventually me and him kind of went back and forth, you know, and then he, he got kind of nasty with me on the phone. But, um, he pretty much summed it up that, uh, you know, I'm a distraction and I ruined his Sabbath. And, and uh, he asked me not to call him back on on that subject. But, uh, the man is clearly a liar. And, you know, he, he said that he told me that he read it from the, uh, basically he lied twice. He lied to the, uh, the congregation and he also lied to me by telling me that he read it directly from the rod message so um these are your ministers these are the people that you trust and he this man speaks all over many adventist churches open their doors to him and again here is a uh an example of somebody i was talking to on facebook and this this young lady was deceived. Her name was Alyssa Marie. And um, this sister believed a lie. But she's simply one of the many thousands of SDA members that fell into the trap of Satan. Um, listening to gossip and believing lies. I'm going to read to you what she says. She writes in reply to me. Also, doesn't the Shepherd Rod folk believe that Sister Victor will give them authority to kill Seventh-day Adventists? If so, I suggest you take your silly ASS on talking about this malarkey. Now, this, this young lady is a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay, but do you see the type of language she's using? And uh, I just want to point out how ignorant she is because she didn't even know that Brother Houtef was a man. Victor Houtef is a man. But here she is calling him Sister Victor. She didn't even know who the man was. And so I simply replied to her with uh, the reply that I'm going to give you later on the presentation. I'm not going to read it here, but the Rod message, again, the, I can't stress it enough. The Rod message does not teach that they're going to kill seven-day Adventists. They've always believed that is going to be the work of angels. And here's another brother. He's, a, he's opposed to the truth. Of the shepherd rod message but he does tell the truth on the uh, about the the shepherd rod message his name is ishmael rodriguez he was once a zealous member uh in the shepherd rod uh, believer circles and he almost became the president of the movement but somebody was elected over him and since he was such a position seeker and he didn't get the position that he wanted, he rebelled against the message. And now he's viciously opposed to the message that he once proclaimed because he didn't get his way. But as you see in this video file I'm about to show you, at least he tells the truth. Now this is a man, he knows the shepherd rod message and used to teach it. He used to teach it all over the world to people. And he realized that, you know, now that I'm opposed to the message, I can capitalize off of this and go and still, you know, go from church to church, church and get paid by being opposed to the shepherd rod message. You know, this is a very powerful player in the hands of Satan, you know, because now he's opposed and he can go from church to church and spread and uh, spread false information against the rod message. But um, let's watch this video clip and he's going to tell you that the shepherd rod message believers do not believe that they're going to be the ones to kill those um who do not believe in the rod message all right i'm going to play the clip Adventists who do not embrace the shepherd's rod message will be will not be allowed in heart of kingdom they all will be killed and let me tell you what although the videos today claim that brother harrow as they uh, 
call him. Brother Harav never said that the Davidians were going to be the executioners of their brothers in the Adventist church. Nonetheless, I have at least one quotation in which he does say that they will be the instrument that God is going to use in order to annihilate all the members of the Adventist church that do not come to the shepherd's rod. Listen, listen to his record. Page 216, Shepherd's Rod series. Therefore, Jerusalem, the place where the feet of the Lord shall stand, will become the great international and spiritual divide for the everlasting gospel. Moreover, he says in the same page 216, in that day the Lord's feet will stand on the Mount of Olives and the mountain cleaves toward the east and toward the west, making a great valley. And then to this valley of the mountains, to the place where the Lord's feet stand, the people of God flee as hastily as from an earthquake. Thus is Jerusalem to be re-inhabited by God's own people. Plainly, Jerusalem is to become the great gathering place for God's people. In the same page, 216, the Lord reigns first over Jerusalem and finally after the saints are gathered in from the four corners of the earth, He reigns over the whole planet. Page 217. Now we see that this event, the Lord standing on the mount and the saints flitting to the valley, is not only premillennial, but even pre-probationary. Shepherds read series 366. As Noah's ark preserved every living thing that was to inhabit the earth after the flood in like manner, the restored kingdom of Judah and Israel is to gather and preserve from the place every living thing that is to inhabit the new earth. What is the problem with this kingdom of peace and safety? Well, that was exactly the same feeling of the Jews just before the coming of the Messiah. They thought that the Messiah was coming to free them from the Roman yoke, that they were going to be the kingdom that would be uh, governing the whole earth. And you see what happened because of their false interpretation, they were not ready to receive the Messiah. So as you can see, this brother, he was, he was telling, he told the truth that, uh, Shepherd Rod believers do not teach that uh, they will be the ones to carry out the execution of Ezekiel 9. And then he says that he gives one, he's go, he was going to give one reference where it does seem like they say that they will do so, but that reference didn't back up his claims. Go back and watch it. There's, there's absolutely nothing about killing anybody in the reference that he gave. So, um, again, you can pull this, this DVD this DVD presentation up it's called unmasking the wolf and uh, pastor actually gave me a copy of this once he found out that I was studying the shepherd rod message but um it didn't convince me that the rod message was false at all because I had read the, the rod message previously to this now this DVD will it it will deceive you if you never read the rod message for yourself but I had already read the Rod message and knew what it said, so um, I was easily I was able to easily see through this man's lies uh, because he he twists, you know what uh, Brother Houtef says, and he knows that most people aren't going to go back and investigate the message for themselves, and thus they'll remain deceived. But um, my best advice to you is if you want to know the truth, go to the source. If you want to know what the Rod message says, go to the Rod message. Don't go to a man who's opposed to the Rod message and expect to get the, the whole truth from the subject. And just like you wouldn't go to a Sunday minister to learn about the Sabbath. Pretty much. So Let's take a look at what uh, the pen of inspiration says in terms of Ezekiel 9. And before I read this, I suggest that you read the, the, the chapter, the whole entire chapter of Ezekiel 9. Just so you'll have have fresh in your mind and you'll know the context of this 
this text here. This is taken from one manuscript release, page 260, paragraph 2. Pen of Inspiration states, Study the ninth chapter of Ezekiel. These words will be literally fulfilled. Yet the time is passing and the people are asleep. They refuse to humble their souls and to be converted. Not a great while longer will the Lord bear with the people who have such great and important truths revealed to them, but who refuse to bring these truths into their individual experience. The time is short. God is calling. Will you hear? Will you receive his message? Will you be converted before it is too late? Soon, very soon, every case will be decided for eternity. So there you have it. From the pen of inspiration from Ellen G. White herself, she's telling you, the, the words of Ezekiel 9, what's written in Ezekiel 9, will be literally fulfilled. What the, what the shepherd rod message did was simply took what she said and restated it. So it's like, what are they doing wrong? What did the rod message do wrong? We're simply restating what Ellen G. White already said. We're trying to warn our brethren of the wrath to come. Take a look what she says, Testimonies, Volume 5, page 211. The class who do not feel grieved over their own spiritual declension, nor mourn over the sins of others, will be left without the seal of God. The Lord commissions his messengers, the men with slaughtering weapons in their hands. Go ye after him through the city, and smite, and let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Here we see that the church, the Lord's sanctuary, was the first to feel the stroke of the wrath of God. Ellen G. White, she made it very clear. It's the church, the Lord's sanctuary, that was first to feel the stroke of the wrath of God. Once this work takes place in the church, then this work is going to move into the world. But it takes place in the church first because we know that judgment begins in the house of God first. You can read that in, P in the book of Peter. Continuing in uh, Testimonies Volume 5, The ancient men, those to whom God have given great light and who have, who have had stood as guardians of the spiritual interests of the people, have betrayed their trust. They have taken the positions that we need not look for for miracles in the marked manifestation of God's power as in former days. Times have changed. These words strengthen their unbelief. And they say the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. He is too merciful to visit his people in judgment. Thus peace and safety is the cry for men who will never again lift up their voice like a trumpet to show God's people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. These dumb dogs that would not bark are the ones who feel the just vengeance of an offended God. Men, maidens, and little children all perish together. The abominations for which the faithful ones were sighing and crying were all that could be discerned by finite eyes. But by far the worst sins, those which provoked the jealousy of the pure and holy God, were unrevealed. People, how much plainer can it be? This is from Ellen G. White's pen. The shepherd rod message simply reiterated what she already stated. But instead, your ministers, they're going to give you peace and safety messages. And they try to hide not only what the shepherd rod message says, but they also try to hide what Ellen G. White says. Because they're not reading this stuff to you from the pulpit. And it's a shame. It's very sad. And not only do they hide what Ellen G. White says, but they, hide, they try to hide uh, what the rod message says to you. By lying on it. They lie on the rod message. And tell you not to read it. And they know if you read the rod message. Not only would you hear the truth. But it would draw you back to what Ellen G. White had already said. It will lead you back to the, to the warnings that Ellen G. White had already given us. Let's look at the truth. The, the SDA church. Has all of the original first edition Shepherd Rod documents in their archives. The material was free, was freely being sent to them while it was being published back in the, in the 30s through the 50s. If the statement that the Rod believer, believing members were going to kill Seventh-day Adventists were really true, all the ministry 
All the SEA ministry will have to do is produce the quotes because they have the original first edition documents. But there is no such statement. And your ministers are a bunch of liars. They're lying to you. The Shepherd Rod message does not teach what they say. And it's sad. It's truly pathetic on their part. Let's look at the three witnesses. What did Jesus say? Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. But he, speaking of Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Luke chapter 10 verse 26, he says, He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? So I just want to point out that it was, it was Christ's custom to go by simply what was written. Not by hearsay. Not by gossip. Christ went by what was written in the law. And we need to do the same. If we are to be like Christ, we need to go by what's written. Not by what's spoken. By people who are prejudiced. Let's look at the third witness, Ellen G. White. This was taken from Testimonies, Volume 5, page 696. And now to all who have a desire for truth, I would say, do not give credence to unauthenticated reports as to what Sister White has done or said or written. If you desire to know what the Lord has revealed through her, read her published works. Are there any points of interest concerning which she has not written? Do not eagerly catch up. Excuse me, let me read that. Are there any points of interest concerning what she has not written? Do not eagerly catch up and report rumors as to what she has said. Again, again, clearly, we have the, the counsel from God's servant. Do not eagerly catch up and report rumors as to what an individual says, Ellen G. White or anybody. And we simply need to go by the published works and what's written. Let's look at the third witness, Victor T. Houtef, the author of the Shepherd Rod message. It is imperative, therefore, that every present truth believer teach and practice only present truth. Teach not short of nor beyond what is published. Weave not into it private interpretations or constructions, theories and ideas, and do nothing less or nothing more than what the message calls for. Clear. Go by the published works. And do not in inject into it your own private interpretations. And again, we have another reference. This is from his Symbolic Code series. He states, I'm not urging you to believe every word that is spoken by me in every day's passing conversation. But I am trying to make you realize that for the sake of Christ, as well as for your soul, you should believe all that is written. Again, we must go by the written works, not by what somebody says. Go by what's documented by pen and paper. That's the standard that God has used throughout every generation. Every generation since the time of Moses, let me put it that way. Now, we shall let the defendant take his stand. What does Victor Houtef have to say on the matter? The truth. What does the rod say? This was a question that was sent into Victor Houtef's ministry. This was the question. This was the question. Are the 144,000 after being sealed to go and kill all the others in the Adventist and the SDA church who failed to receive the seal? Here's the answer. The slaying of the tares in the church is plainly foretold that this is not man's duty to perform. The prophet Ezekiel in vision was shown that the angels who bear the slaughter weapons are the ones whom the Lord commissions to slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women, but to come not near any man upon whom is the mark. The Lord makes this destruction of the tares still plainer by his parabolic illustration, saying, Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. 
so shall it be in the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. People, it is clear as day. I know this. The Adventist church knows this. So why are they still lying? Why do they still spread this false report? The message clearly states this is not man's duty to perform. People, this is truly sad. Your ministers, they lie to you and they take your money. What does the pen of inspiration say? The spirit of prophecy. L.G. White states, Finite man is likely to misjudge character, but God does not leave the work of judgment and pronouncing upon character to those who are not fitted for it. We are not to say what constitutes the wheat and what the tares. The time of the harvest will fully determine the character of the two classes, specified under the figure of the tares and the wheat. The work of separation is given to the angels of God and not committed into the hands of any man. Again, clearly, it's clear. It's the work of angels, the literal angels that live in heaven, not given into the work, the hands of any man. And I hope you can see that Brother Houtef simply restated what Ellen G. White has already said. The truth in perfect harmony. Jesus, Sister White, and Brother Houtef are all on one accord. The separation, the literal slaughter of Ezekiel 9, will be the work of literal angels and not man's duty. But your ministers will tell you different because they are of their father, the devil. Final warning. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 43 and 45, Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lesser your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because th there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. You know? And, and sadly, people, many people, I'm telling you the truth. I'm showing you clearly what the rod message says, but you know what? Many of you are not going to believe what I'm telling you. Even though it's clearly written in black and white, some of you are still going to believe the lie because some of you like to be deceived. You know, and it's like, why are your ministers lying? Why lie? If the rod message said that, show the quotes. Quote them. Lies and prejudice. I want to give you a historic example of what lies and prejudice can do. Many of you are no different than, the, than these wicked people here in this, in this photo. All of these white racist individuals. The lies and prejudice attitude caused the deaths of thousands. The same spirit that was working through them is in many of your hearts today. Only the Holy Ghost power is restraining you from committing similar atrocities. The same spirit of prejudice and pride that was in the hearts of these individuals is operating, operating in the church today, operating in, in the general conference, operating from the pulpit. Some of the ministers that you adore, the same spirit of prejudice is in their hearts and you look up to them, sadly. As they, again, they lie to you and take your money. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 10 through 12 states, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. People take heed. After seeing this, nobody should believe that the shepherd rod believers are going to kill seven-day Adventists. After the clear evidence I have given you and showed you. The Shepherd Rob message simply restates what Ellen G. White has already told us. And sadly, your ministers want to shut up uh, the Shepherd Rob message and Ellen G. White. They lie to you and they take your money. Only thing that's on their mind is money.
Final warning. Something is clearly wrong when so many SDA ministers are lying on a message. If they lied on this point, how many other points have they lied to you about? People, it is time to start holding these ministers accountable. Look, even the New York Times article, I'm going to show you a New York Times article, even the New York Times, worldly publications have the truth on what the Shepherd Rob message teaches. I'm going to show you the article. Alright, this article was published in the New York Times uh, magazine in 1993. The article title was Beliefs by Peter Steinfels. And uh, let me just give you the background of the article. You can look it up. The background is, this was right after what took place in Waco, Texas with David Koresh. Alright, and sadly, the Shepherd Rod believers were being linked to what David Koresh did. Alright. What the Shepherd Rod believers believe and what David Koresh believes are two different things. But the world and the SDA church were trying to blend the two together. And so there was a brother named Anthony Hibbert. He was trying to clear, clear up, you know, the misinformation that people were spreading on the, against the Shepherd Rod message believers. And um, P Peter Steinfeld, he was the one that reported the article. I'm simply going to read the highlighted portions. I'm reading the highlighted portions, quoting, Citing a formal statement from the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, a group of about 500 active members, Mr. Hibbert said the branch Davidians and their leader David Koresh are not a representation of our message. The statement continued, We do not advocate the use of guns, violence, free sex, or anything of that nature. Alright, so that's clearly the stance of what the Shepherd Rod members believe. We do not advocate the use of guns, violence, free sex, or anything of that nature. And we are not under the umbrella of David Koresh. Okay, David Koresh was doing something. He was doing his own thing. Quoting the second uh, highlighted section. Quoting. Central to his teachings. Uh, speaking of Mr. Hibbert's teachings. Was the belief that at the beginning of the last days. God will purge the church and especially its leadership of all but the truly faithful, an action how to believe was foretold in the Bible. Ezekiel 9 relates a vision in which God sent six heavenly figures to slay all those in Jerusalem not marked on the forehead. In another vision, in Revelation chapter 7, 100, 144,000 foreheads are marked. How to have concluded that these are the survivors of the Persian related in Ezekiel 9? And I'm, Sister White, she also backs up that claim. Okay, if you read my, if I'm sorry, if you watch my video on the hundred and forty-four thousand, I make I make it all clear what Ellen G. White said in terms of Ezekiel nine and the hundred and forty-four thousand. But continuing the highlighted uh, portion reading, it states, Mr. Hibbert first described this divine action as a physical separation, but then in a franker reference to the passage in Ezekiel, he called it a slaughter of unworthy seven-day Adventists. Of course the church doesn't like that, he said. But he has insisted that this rep retribution would not be done by guns and not by us or any human beings, but by God himself and his angels. We want to make that very clear. We love the church and care about it, he added. It would be nice for you to put that in. So, people, basically with the Shepherd Rod message, that we're trying to give you guys a warning. We're warning you that abominations are taking place in the church and that God is going to get fed up with the SDA church and that he's going to send angels in the church to literally slay those who are partaking in these abominations. And it's clearly written in the Shepherd Rod message and it's clearly written in, in the writings of Ellen G. White. And what, this, what the Shepherd Rod message is doing is taking the writings of Ellen G. White and simply more boldly proclaiming them. That's it. But again, your ministers want to keep both Ellen G. White, what Ellen G. White said and the Shepherd Rod message um, under wraps. They, they want to hide it and they want to give you peace and safety messages. Fluffy messages which have no substance.
And I just want to encourage you to uh, investigate and be blessed. And remember, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know, there's no reason why any of you should ever, all those who watch this should ever believe that Shepard Rob believes they're going to go out and kill seven day Adventists. That's simply not true. If you want to know the truth, go to the source. Go to what the Shepherd Rob message says. You know, in uh let's just say there was there was some a Sunday, a group of Sunday worshippers spreading lies on the Adventist church. You know, wouldn't you want to clear up the truth the truth? Wouldn't you want to make known the truth? Say that there was a Sunday church out there saying that Seventh day Adventists were gonna go out and kill Sunday worshippers. Wouldn't you wanna wouldn't you wanna clear up the truth as a seventh day Adventist? The same thing has happened to the Shepherd Rod message. People. It's the same thing. So let's look at the final ruling. Based on the evidence provided, we the jury find the Shepherd Rod message not guilty of the charges presented. And unless the seventh day Adventists who are spreading these lies repent of breaking the ninth commandment, all prosecutors will have their day in court at the great white throne judgment to be sentenced and receive their final reward, death in the lake of fire. With that being said, this case is closed.